Hey folks, well, here we are at the final episode of the Bring Back the Salmon Virtual Classroom Hatchery Program. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a bit about what an Atlantic salmon is, what it looks like, and a bit about its life. I hope that you understand how human activities, that of the European settlers, caused Atlantic salmon to become extirpated from Lake Ontario through deforestation, the damming of rivers, overfishing, and pollution. But that you also understand how we can learn from the past to help shape a better future. And through careful observation and stewardship, we can better care for the world around us and restore lost and important members of our ecological communities, like we are doing with Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon. Since January, we've watched Atlantic Salmon eggs produced at Harwood Fish Culture Station develop from the eyed egg stage, hatch into elven, and use up their yolk sacs to become fry. After we release them into the stream, the ones able to find enough food, avoid hungry predators, and survive the conditions of their habitats, will grow into par, swim downstream as smolts, grow into adults in the lake, and swim back upstream to spawn and start the next generation of Atlantic salmon. I have been really enjoying spending time with these fish, getting to observe them feeding, interacting with each other, and swimming in the current produced by the filter and air pump. I've been in here daily as of late, making sure that the filters and air pumps in both hatcheries kept working, feeding the fry in tank two, changing water and cleaning tanks to keep everything clean, and warming the tanks up to as close to the stream temperature as possible. To do this, I've been in touch with a conservation authority who has a temperature gauge to measure stream temperature just downstream from one of our release sites. The temperature drops overnight to around 8 to 9 degrees Celsius and climbs back up to around 13 degrees Celsius during the day. So I've been aiming for that upper number of 13 degrees Celsius in our tanks. This temperature increase has helped get the elven in tank one to use up their yolk sacs. Ideally, we would have them completely used up and the fish at the fry stage before we release them. These ones still have a bit of their yolk sacs left, but they are fit enough to go into the stream and the yolk will give them a bit of time to adjust to their new home. Today is the big day. We're going to collect our fish out of our two tanks and take them to two of our program restoration streams and release our fish into the wild. But before we get to that, let's just have one last hatchery check just to make sure that everything's been functioning properly. Hatchery number one. The filter and air pump are still functioning and the temperature is just below our target of 13 degrees Celsius. Hatchery number two, filter and pump are also still functioning 
and the temperature is sitting right at our target of 13 degrees Celsius. So we're going to collect them and get them ready for transport. To do that, I've got my equipment to collect the fish. I've got a bowl to put the rocks in. I've got a bucket to get the water out of the tank. I've got nets to catch the fish. Some nice big containers to put the fish into. And then again, we have our cooler with the ice packs to keep the fish cool during transport. We don't want them to warm up. And then of course, I've got a towel. So let's get started at collecting our fish. Okay, so I've got Elizabeth here with me and we're going to start with tank number one and get these Elvin out and ready for transport. So the first thing that I do, again, I turn off our power. So we got all the power off to this unit. And then I'm gonna get a bit of a water from the tank. The same temperature that the fish are in right now, the same water. And that's what they're gonna be in while we make our way to our release site. So I get a bit of that in that container. And then I'm gonna have Elizabeth here help me get water out of this tank. We're gonna take maybe about half of the water out of this tank. Then while Elizabeth's doing that, I'm going to take the rocks out because now we have Elvin in here. So of course they're hiding down in within the rocks. And um, when they see my big hands coming in, they're going to be trying to find places to hide. So they're going to be in amongst these rocks. So I've got to be really careful while I do that. I'm just going to scoop down and I check within these rocks to see if I've got any fish hiding in there before I put them into this container. Okay, so now we've got all the rocks out. Now what we've got left is we've got fish and water. And so we're gonna use these nets and we very gently catch the fish and we count them as we put them into this container to see uh, how many we've got surviving. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we go. All right, so I've got all of, all of the Elvin out of tank number one, and I've put them actually into two containers just to spread them out a little bit. And we've got 93 surviving Elvin in these containers. See them swimming around here. So now what we do is we put these containers with the lids on, and you'll notice that they're, these containers have, we're about half full on water, and that allows a lot of air space in there that's going to help to keep oxygen in this water while we're transporting them. And the, the container swashing around in the car a little bit, that's gonna help to mix the air into the water and keep lots of oxygen in there. So I'm now gonna put these containers, put the lids on and put them into the cooler with the ice packs to keep them chilled and we'll do hatchery number two. Okay, so now we're on to hatchery number two, same process. Gonna turn off the power. Get our water, about half full on our containers. And then we'll empty about half the tank out. And then we'll also take the rocks out. Now this time, our fry are a little bit less fragile, still fragile, but less fragile but they're also moving around a lot more. So catching them is gonna be a little bit trickier. So I think I'll have, I'll have uh, Elizabeth catch these fish. 
All right, so now we're left again with water and fish, this time fry. So Elizabeth is going to start catching the fish. And we have 90 fry in tank number two. 90 healthy looking fry, which means that we had lost seven eggs in this tank, seven eggs that didn't hatch. And then we have had three fish that died after that. Now we can see side by side the difference in our alvin and fry as influenced by the difference in temperature. All right, so our fish are ready to go. We're gonna put them in the cooler and we're gonna drive to the first release site, which is Balls Mill Conservation Area in Coburg. We'll see you there. Okay, so we've arrived at our first release site. We've got our fish in our cooler and we're gonna make our a nice little trail at Balls Mill Conservation Area. Let's go. Okay, so we found a really nice spot here um, in a tributary stream leading into Coburg Creek. And um, we've got all the components here of habitat that make this a really good site. So I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth in a minute and she's gonna talk a little bit about the habitat that's here. Um, in this spot, we have a temperature of 14 degrees Celsius. So just slightly warmer than we had our tanks, but that's pretty darn close. This is gonna be good. Um, so. I'll turn it over to Elizabeth now and she can talk about the habitat. Hi everyone. So as Ben was saying, we chose Coburg Brook to release these Atlantic salmon because it has ideal habitat. So if you look around me, you'll see that there's trees lining the shoreline. And these trees are really important for the habitat of Atlantic salmon for a bunch of reasons. So first, the branches over top cast shade onto the stream which helps the stream stay cold for the salmon. So another reason why trees are so important for Atlantic salmon habitat is that their roots help keep the water clean. And this is because if you look on the shoreline, you can see that the roots actually hold the soil in place. And this means that as the water flows, the soil doesn't get eroded away, which helps keep the water clean. Trees are also an important habitat feature because as their leaves, twigs and branches fall into the water, they create shelter for Atlantic salmon. And also, as the leaves break down and disintegrate into the water, they provide nutrients for Atlantic salmon and other living organisms in the water. Another reason why this stream is good habitat for Atlantic salmon is because it's connected to Lake Ontario. So this means that as Atlantic salmon grow and are ready to smolt, they can travel downstream to Lake Ontario, where there's enough space to grow and find food. And another reason why this is a good habitat for Atlantic salmon is because there are so many rocks in the stream. And rocks are important because they provide shelter, so a space for the fish to get out of the stream. And they also are the space where benthic invertebrates live. And as if you remember, this is the main food source of Atlantic salmon. So we'll just pick up a rock here and see if we can see some benthic invertebrates. All right, let's see if we can see any benthic invertebrates. So if you look here, you can see a small little benthic macroinvertebrate. So this is what the juvenile Atlantic salmon will feed on when they're in the cold water stream. So look at all these benthic macroinvertebrates. So you can see there's a few different species. And these could be the larvae of a bunch of insects that you'll see flying around. So like dragonflies, damselflies. So we'll turn it over to Ben now uh, and we'll release the fish. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we are gonna release half of our fry from tank two and half of our elven from tank one. 
So I've got half the fry, 45 fry here. And what I'd like you folks that are watching this to do is to name these fish. I'm gonna name this one right here after my son Leaf, the joke teller. And I'm also gonna name this one right here, I'm gonna name this one Juniper, who was a student that was in one of the question and answer periods and I told her that I'd name a fish after her. So there's Juniper, that one's for you, Juniper. And uh, so name these fish. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the net and we're gonna release the fish into the water. So I net, net one out. So there goes the first one. And I'll let that fish out. Let you go. And then I'll just do that with the rest of the fish. They're feeling that current and swimming around in it. Okay, so now we've got half of our elven from tank one. And I'm actually gonna release them here in a little bit of quieter water, a little bit of slower water, just because they're not quite as good of swimmers yet. Um, and I'll, I'm not, instead of netting them out, I'm just gonna slowly pour them in over here and let them stay together a little bit if they'd like to. And you can once again, name a fish, call it a name. All right, and here we go. These fish can make their way down into here. All right, and that's it. That's it for our fish at this site. Now we'll go back up to the car and we're gonna drive to Greenwood Conservation Area in Pickering and release the rest of our fish into Duffins Creek. We'll see you there. All right, folks, so here we are at our second release site the beautiful Greenwood Conservation Area in Pickering, Ontario. This is a great place if you live around here as well to uh, come for a hike, so keep that in mind. Um, so we've got a great site to release our fish at. Again, we've got some shady areas, some branches that reach over the water, that drop leaf material into the water that helps to feed the aquatic ecosystem, feed the little bugs that feed our fish. Um, we've got root systems holding together the banks, helping to hold back some of the erosion. We've got some woody material that's fallen down into the water that provides some structural habitat to not only fish, but also to the aquatic invertebrates that the fish eat. And we can actually see here that the beavers have been helping with this, um, a tree that's been dropped by a beaver down into the water, and that's a common part of this uh, of this e ecosystem. Uh, it's an important part of it. And we have, again, I've tested the water temperature. We've got 13 degrees Celsius, perfect temperature, what we were going for with our tanks. And um, we also have a nice rocky substrate here, which is the bottom. The substrate is the bottom of the stream. And so there are lots of places for the fish to hide, lots of places for benthic macroinvertebrates to be as well. And actually when we were walking down here, we spooked a bunch of small salmon fry that are about the same size as the ones that we'll be releasing. I'm not sure I didn't get enough of a good look at them to be able to tell which type of salmon, but it is a great site for young salmon. So this time I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth now and she's gonna release our fish. Okay, so Elizabeth has the other half of our fry from tank number two. So again, she'll just Show us that. You can name your fish. Choose a name, quick. All right, got it. Okay, and now we're gonna do the same process. Elizabeth is going to scoop a fish out. She'll do that with a few of them, and then actually what we're gonna do is I'll get Elizabeth to walk across the stream and just spread the fish out a little bit. Not too much, but just And off they go, there's our fry. Off to make it in the big world. And now we'll move to our elven. Okay, so now Elizabeth has our elven from tank number one, half the elven. And call out your name that you're gonna name a fish. All right, and we'll do the same process with these ones as we did with the rest of the fish. 
going to scoop a few of them out, set them into the water, and then she'll dump the rest out. And we wish them well on their way. Good luck, little friends. Thanks for all the learning you brought us. And that's it, folks. Our fish are released. Well, there we have it, folks. Our fish are in the streams and our tanks are empty. My work isn't done here yet, though. Our equipment needs to be properly cared for and put away so that next year it is ready to hatch more Atlantic salmon. It needs to be put away in a safe place, clean and dry, so that it will function properly and next year's fish will be healthy. If I put this away wet and dirty, it will grow smelly, scummy and moldy, which will make future headaches for the person operating, probably me, and harm the fish. So I'll empty the tanks, rinse everything off with clean water, no soap, because soap can also impact the fish, and then I will dry everything and put it away in its proper storage area. While I'm doing that, I'm going to turn it back over to Johnny for a couple of last words from him. One thing I really hope you guys take away from the program is how important it is to be good stewards of our land. Everything is connected. From the forests, the animals, our waterways, the sun, everything is intertwined. And we need to make sure we do our best to take care of the natural world. Thank you everybody for coming along on this journey. We'll see you next time. Thanks again, Johnny. Our hatchery equipment is properly stored until next season. And I've returned our classroom space back to how I found it in January and cleaned it all up. I believe it is a good practice to leave places better than when you found them, be it a campsite, a park, grandma's house, or a virtual classroom space. In closing, I want to give a huge shout out of gratitude to our program sponsor, Ontario Power Generation, the Ontario Trillium Foundation for helping fund this classroom hatchery program, the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters for all their support with this and other conservation programs, and for hosting this virtual program here at the beautiful OFAH Mario Cordellucci Hunting and Fishing Centre in Peterborough, Ontario. A huge thanks also goes out to all of our presenters, Johnny and Elizabeth, and to you, the viewers, for following along. Take care everybody, and don't forget to keep on swimming upstream. Mm -hmm.